go, what's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video on the second channel inside of today's video. We're back with some competitive gameplay. Finally, this is going to be LCQ day number two, Reply Totem versus Tribe Gaming. I won't ruin anything. I mean, me, myself, I've not even watched this game because yesterday I was too busy. I would have actually gone to see this live in person, but I was actually out for my dad's 50. If we went to watch Liverpool, it was a nice day, but... You know, I do miss Brawl Stars. I would have actually loved to go see this live, especially considering it was like Gamescom, Germany. It would have been so fun. So the first game we're going to cover is Reply Totem versus Tribe. Of course, do I even need to introduce these two teams? They always face off against each other. And it's, it's just going to be an insane game, right? EU versus NA. And of course, being a part of Tribe now, we're always going to root for the tri Tribe boys. Some great friends with them, especially... So yeah, let's take a look at the compositions then. So Chester as a first pick is pretty much guaranteed. I would maybe say that Gale is a bit better as a first pick, mainly because you can pinch around the underbind walls a little bit better. He's just a little bit more consistent, but Chester's an insane pick on undermine as well. So Frank, Frank into Gale already is a bit questionable, although Frank is very good in undermine. And in NA, they've just been known to just go tanks galore anyway, so... I'm a little bit concerned though because Totem have last pick. They already have Megan Gale, which is a tank counter. If they go for okay, we go with Larry and Laurie in the mid. Hmm. I don't know how to feel about this. Throws can be pretty good. And Larry and Laurie are good against tanks as well because you can switch star power. So what would you actually go into this? You could put Meg Lane, perhaps, and then go with a different mid. You could go with I was going to say pipe, but a pipe wouldn't be good enough. Wouldn't be enough damage. I don't know. I, I literally stumbled because I don't really face off against throwers on Undermine. So I'm going to go with Max. Okay, yeah, Max is a good pick. I was thinking that they could easily, like, in Tribe's mind, they're going to send Meg mid, but you can always send Meg lane as well, especially on Undermine. Like, her main attack can just scout the entire grass. It can also be really good at pinching around the wall as well because the old Meg could do that anyways, but it can just do that even better with the projectile change. So... I would say I 100% would rather have the reply totem composition because Gale's going to have a matchup against either Frank and Chester. I know for once Frank gets his hypercharge, there's not really much stopping him. But yeah, I think they have the more consistent composition. Larry and Laurie aren't really going to be that effective against anyone here. I think they more so just went him because uh, it's the one throw that's actually not too bad against Tank. So yeah, this is a bad start from Tribe. I didn't really expect it to go that bad at the start i mean meg is out of mech but he's going to get that back straight away great speed from chaos there allows maru just to escape frank's range maru might be able to get that kill right there zulan manages to get a clutch super and get the kill but totem just have all the pressure and all of the control pretty much so far so it's gonna be pretty hard to push into larry i mean as a meg you do have a lot of hp though but the good thing is is that max is good against throws once you get the speed so it'll be interesting to see what stop power chaos using i'm not actually too sure but maru he's got a stun stop power against frank which is going to be really good because that can also help uh cancel a bunch of different things maru's gonna go uh down here Marie is going to get another stun, and boy is Gale very, very good in this meta. So Tyra's in a good position here. Marie is going to get Frank supered, but in doing so, it's allowed him to get a little bit more pressure. Good gadget back from Chaos, just making sure that he doesn't do anything stupid. But now Tribe have positioning, especially with a throw behind the wall here. Marie is going to try and take Tyrant down at least, so then they could push into him. Here comes the max hypercharge though onto three brawlers. And then Chaos might be able to cycle through to another one. Maru does have his hypercharge and super available. He's not going to opt to use it just yet though. Tribe are getting a lot of pressure right here. Another max super. Maru's going to get Fade pretty weak. But I think Fade survives this. Just great plays from him. Okay, Tribe are coming back into this. I didn't expect it. It looks all Totem's favor. This is, this is going to be a bang out, right? Like... I predicted this one to go to the last set as well in my predictions video. And looks like Tribe do get the last gem. Unfortunately, Zulan does get caught there. The Gale Hypercharge just deletes everybody. I think that was a triple kill. And I don't know why it just cut off the gameplay straight away. Because the game isn't over. <laughs> okay. ESL production. Yeah, at its finest again. Fantastic. But that's going to be total pretty much robbing them there i think that was just a perfect timing from mari triple kill with the hypercharge yeah that's just absolutely busted so one thing i will say pretty early on in the video i got a lot of hate for my predictions videos but if you guys actually like 
listen to what I say in the videos, you would know. I'm not again. I'm not going to ruin this one, but. I say a lot of, like, when I make votes, I'm just doing it for me. So if I say something I'm with my heart, probably don't go for it, right? If I'm saying it's a 50-50, like, how is it my fault that a game is so incredibly close? Like, it's Brawl Stars. Like, anyone can win on the day. It's literally about compositions. Like, you literally saw last year, like, Crazy Raccoon lost because of their draft and no one expected it. Anything can happen. So you don't blame me. Blame the players. Like, <laughs> if you get your prediction wrong, it's not me that's lost the game for you. Like, come on. Anyhow, enough waffling. <laughs> I just thought it was pretty funny. Because, yeah, it was, it was just pretty hilarious. The same with uh, the ECP game as well. Like, I, I literally said that it can go either way. It'll be a set five. But I'm just going to go with my heart. Because literally, two of my best friends in, literally, in life... Are on that team. Of course, I'm going to vote for them. If I don't vote for them, I'm not a real friend. Right. <laughs> Waffling. <laughs> like a minute of waffles. Sorry. I was just really bothered. I got quite a few messages. That are too funny. Right. Uh, Totem. I do have some good control here. Fade is actually doing a decent job considering he's against the Gale. Uh, but I, I guess he can at least juke out shots a little bit. Here comes Totem just robbing the gems again. Uh, it's kind of how I expected it to go. Like the problem that Tribe have is that. I just don't really like Larry as a mid. Sometimes it works, and especially on Undermine, it can create some spawn trapping scenarios, but just eventually, Totem will just able just to gain control back with a max hype charge, with max speed, with Gale supers, etc. I think that's really well played from them, to be honest. So yeah, Totem, they go one set up. Let's jump into the next game. Guys, jumping into the second set, we have Brubble Penalty Kick, and Tribe are going to go Frank first pick, which... I mean, Frankie's good. I, again, like, uh, there are differences in the drafts, what I've been noticing. When I was watching a few scrims, I saw a lot of uh, ST men going a lot of Frank early on the draft. So I think it kind of definitely correlated to the um, the real games as well. So sorry, I was, I was just looking at the crowd there because there, are, there were a lot of people at the event. I'm kind of good because I went two years ago to Gamescom and I don't know whether the game just wasn't as popular there, especially in Germany. And they did switch some things up. Like, for example, like the casters in English, they actually were in Poland and live at the event. I think it was German casting. So that probably did improve some of the popularity there. But it would have been nice to support the boys up close. Right, so Chester in Retaliation and Meg again. So I'm starting to see Deja Vu here. Meg is very good into Frank, mainly because Meg can have the knockback. You've also got the fact that Meg essentially gets a second life paired with 8k HP, which is just crazy. Chester's gonna, just going to easily get a lot of supers against the Frank. And you can never really go wrong if you get the uh, Dynamite Super from Chester as well. You're going to be able to open up the map and counter the Frank easier. So, Dynamite. Hmm. Hmm. Dynamite this early on. I mean, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. They do got to go a tank counter now, surely, though, if they go Dynamite and Frank. So, surely they got to go a tank counter. Or oh, they could go Max, but Max isn't the greatest into that. I don't know what they really pair this with. Let's see. I mean, if, literally, I have no idea. I've not been keeping up with the meta at the end because... Okay, Gale. I completely forgot Gale was open. I've not been keeping up with the meta too much because I know there's an update around the corner. So, yeah, this is the only thing that sucks about the competitive play. Like, I get it as a pro. Like, you'd want the balance changes to be as unfrequent as possible because... If there's balance changes and then you've got an event three days later, it's just the meta screwed over. But that's good from our perspective because then it, it allows me to learn the meta and everything else. Again, I'm waffling here. So in terms of a late pick here, I probably would just... I don't, You can't really go throw over because Frank will open up the map and so will the Dynamite. So we go with the Stew, but I don't really... I like Stew's good into everything. I think I feel like that was maybe a bit of a rush pick though, if uh, if I'm honest. Because Stu's, I mean, Stu can be good into, okay into Gale, okay into Dynamite. But Stu into Frank, like, gonna deal no damage to it. I don't know what else I would have gone, though, to be honest. Maybe try and open up the map more. Yeah, I think if you opened up the map more. I, I mean, they probably will do that with Stu, actually. But I was thinking maybe, like, a Griff or something along with those. Like, I was about to say, we're about to get... Yeah, okay, we're gonna go with a Stu and just open up the map. They could have gone with a Colt, but I think Colt... 
probably was a step too far. But they go with Long Dash Stu to open up the map, which is, you know, that could be considered quite clever. They go Gale Launch Pad as well to try and get into the middle. The problem is now Dynamite doesn't really have any good matchups. And as a another thrower, you could have gone something a bit different. Also, Dynamite wouldn't really pair too well with Frank because I think the more you open up the map, the more it's not going to be that great. Totem just have complete control here with Chester, with Meg. I don't, uh, it's kind of painful watching this because Pedal to Kick is a uh, pretty bad map for competitive, if you guys didn't know. If you're not aware, somehow, it is a bit of a weird one because throws are just so good. Tanks can be so good. There's like wit. It's really hard to score. It's really easy to defend. Like, I just don't like really defensive heavy maps like this. But now there's a breakaway chance for Totem. A good super from Maru. And that should be a goal. Okay. Well, I mean, the, <laughs> Chester is actually annoying to face off against because he could just get really lucky and just get the right super every single time. And that's, again, why you've got to be careful with him not being in... Com uh, to try not allow him to get too competitive. Because, oh, there's another Dynamite super from Maori. Okay. That's going to open up the map even more. And that's going to suck for both Dynamite and Frank. There's just... I don't think there's much that Tribe can really do here. I feel like they kind of just outdrafted himself a little bit too much here. I just think, like, I guess Frank was probably working as an early pick in, in scrims, whatever else, but I just don't know. Like, surely Frank is just too easy to counter in the early draft. Like, even I know that. But surely they had... So I, I, just, I just don't know. I'm just a little bit confused by the Frank early picks. Like, maybe... On Undermine, I could understand it in a way because he's still pretty good into most things. But like, look at this. Map's open. Meg absolutely rips through a Frank. Rips through them. Another Dynamite Super for Mari. And that's going to be the guy. I mean, that's that's probably a bit unfortunate, though. If he just kept getting that Super, then there's just nowhere for them to really stand a chance. So I think the only chance the Tribe really have into this, to be honest, is early on in the game. Because... The more the maps open up, it's just not going to work in their favor whatsoever. Stu open it up. Chester opening it up. Yeah, but we need to make an early goal. So, Chaos going to look to try and build a super and do the same again. Mara is just going to go in. It's what I'm talking about. Like, look at that. Like, Mara, he just sprints into the Frank. And it doesn't even care if he dies. Because he knows he's got the knockback. He's got basically a second life. Meg, when you think about it, has like 12k HP. It's just brutal. Not even 12. He's got the shield gear on. So even more HP. That's just disgusting. Alright, so Tribe. They're looking to keep ball control this time around. I'm not too sure how... Yeah, like... I, I see that he kind of has to go for a super and try to make a play there. But I just don't see how he's going to do anything there. Chaos with another gadget. It's just going to break open the map. I think Chaos, when it comes down to ladder, he's just always final form. I think he's the only player... That has qualified for every single world finals which is just a crazy stat actually crazy and i don't think i don't think anyone in tribe has missed out the world finals for a while totem always get world finals like this is such a hard matchup i believe as well that there's less teams going to world finals this year i can't remember the top of my head i think there is less teams so I think that's just even more unfair for players because there's so many good teams and so many people that deserve a chance i think minimum i think there's 12 teams that could potentially go to Worlds. I think there has to be 16, like, surely. Like, I know that um, Brawl are clearly trying to cut costs, but I think 16 teams do deserve because you think about it, like, how can someone from Tribe or Totem not make it to Worlds? That's just disastrous because they're two gigantic orgs and the system just doesn't really pay into either of their favours. So, Anyways, let's go into this. So, I, I don't know what Tribe are kind of waiting for because in the overtime, surely they're not going to be good either. That, pff, the Dynamite Super from Maru, and he basically cycled through to another Super. Has he just only got Dynamite Supers this game? I'm pretty sure he has, right? Surely this can't be another one. No, okay, he does get the Lou. He gets a Lou one this time around. I think he's pretty much got a good Super every time because he, he got the stun one before as well. Tribe are just looking to keep the ball, I guess, them playing kind of safe... It's going to work in their favor a little bit. We try to break away here. Here comes Zulam with the hypercharge. Trying to do his best, but I just get the feeling that it's just not going to work out for Tribe. It's just not. Frank in overtime. Dynamite in overtime. I just can't see 
how they get a win out of this. They've not got like a Sandy. They've just not got anything that can like turn the tides in their favor. Sandy Super, Max Speed, you know, typical things like that. Then you can always be encouraged. But I think it's really, really down to Zulan here. If he can pop off with his Super. I mean, Fade, here comes the Hypercharge. Maybe something can happen here. Some decent Jukes. Okay, we're in good position here. Okay, maybe. I mean, Fade is pretty low. We're going to go for it here. A little bit of a miss. Pass. I don't know what really went down there. Could have they, they could have maybe got an opportunity. But now we're on the back foot. 20 seconds left. Maru's out of mech, though. Chaos going to look to try and chain his super. Does unfortunately miss a few of those. But here come Tribe on the counter. 10 seconds left. Gale super. Zulan's going to go for it. Ah, there's just not enough space. But here, oh no, Totem on the count. There's no way. There is no way. It went from Tribe looking like they could have scored that to then Totem just scoring on the break. And that's going to be the whole set going to them. Okay, I, I'm kind of stunned at this point in time. So that's going to be set two. Let's hop into set three. So moving on to set number three, we have Bounty Hideout. So Tribe Gaming literally they're facing elimination set right here. They need to turn things around quickly. So it looks like Ed's Livy has subbed in on the Mandy. Okay. And the Mandy first pick, that is... I mean, I like to do that on ranks, but I'm not too sure if that's the pro meta right now. Definitely Brave. If you're a good Mandy though, definitely can pop off. Uh, so taking a look at other picks, Kit is still in play. Got Gene, who's not been picked up. Probably will be picked up easily uh, by Totem. Again, not too sure what. Yeah, Gene's gonna get picked up instantly. I mean, come on, like why can't you can just can't not have Gene, especially on bounties. Just good into everything. You can never really go wrong with that in the draft. They can go with like a Maxis, try and counter the Mandy. We could go with a Perlis Band. I'm just trying to think of any other brawlers that compare well. Uh, Bell's Band as well. I should really have that the draft open on my screen so I can make more in this okay we go with Angelo I have watched a few scrims with Totem and pff, Maru on the Angelo is is it Maru I think it is he's just absolutely beyond cracked I don't know what it is with this guy and he always seems to use the pierce gadget as well it just still like you can just steal some insane damage with it uh yeah the reason why I'm saying mainly scrims because day number one of LCQ I did watch and the gameplay was just like i couldn't even watch totem's group even though it was such a stacked group with navi and toxic lotus i, I couldn't even watch it so i didn't even get to see like what their strategies were didn't see what brawlers there were which is kind of down bad so tribe go with the meg i'm thinking they'd probably pair this with a max or something because max uh yeah probably max or thrower like larry is always pretty safe in the draft uh i know larry's banned maybe a berry even okay we we'll go with a gray so gray is hmm actually gray is actually a good sleeper pick into snipers sometimes you know like i know snipers outrange him but big damage ones like um piper and angelo i've seen quite a few people you run him with the fake injury star power because you can literally I'm trying to think in my head. I think the shot will go from... I forgot what a stop out. Is it like 75% reduction? So it can go from 4k to like 1k. Pretty sure. Off the top of my head. But yeah, that's the reason why I would do it. Like I've seen, for example, pros pick Grey into Angelo mid on a hard drop mine or Piper mid. Just because he offers a lot of utility. It's a decent counter to that. And then, of course, he's got his gadget. He's got his super. So a call last pick is... Hmm... I don't think Carl's really the bet the play into all of that. Like I know you can get blue star with Carl, but like Meg will just rip into Carl. Mandy can do some good damage into Carl. Gray can interrupt Carl's super. And so can Meg with a star power. So I don't know. Maybe they just wanted something a little bit aggressive. I don't know what else you could really pick into that. You can't really go throw because of the gray and the Meg. I was thinking maybe they could have gone. I don't know. I'm gonna have to get my. I'm gonna have to get my tablet up after this because always like looking at. Okay, is Livy already popping off? Zulan got the blue, got, got the blue star already. Is Livy using Pierce gadget as well? Got super to hand. He's gonna wait for Gene to get to right place. I'm not too sure. Too sure we know whether Mandy has super. Okay, we definitely know now. We we'll try to have a good lead already. So Fade's been subbed out for his Livy. But I guess is because Ezlivy is really good on the snipers and Fade's more so known uh, 
for the short range brawlers, the tanks, and everything else. And of course, there's this hideout. And this has been something that Tribe would have prepared for, but it's like Chaos is going to get taken down by the super. I think Ez, Livy, and Zulan in combination were really good there, just confirming to get the kill on over. Use two supers, but better safe than sorry. Looks like Ez, Livy's going to go for the gadget there. Does get the tap and. Make sure that the cold doesn't get out of there. So, so far, try playing really well. Managing to confirm the kills pretty easily. Totem just can't really get anything going so far. Also, another point I wanted to make. I'm not too sure, like, a four-man roster can sometimes work. You get, you get what I mean? Great gadget from Zulan, like... In my head, I'm like, oh, that's good four-man roster. Like, you can just switch. You know, some players can be better in other game modes, etc. But I think because Brawl Stars isn't actually, like that in depth i don't think you really need a four man roster to do that and adapt the strategies and whatever else i think it's just better if three people get the synergy and just practice together like that so maybe it could work against tribe if you get what i mean because they've also got a coach right so great kill from zulan also great kill from tyrant as well and yeah it's like like this is what i'm saying about drafts so importantly i think it's so clear sometimes as soon as they go into the game that one of the teams has draft like it's very rare that it's like 50 50 in most instances and it to me again is so evident that tribe have the draft even though uh totem had last pick which i would always say it's in favor okay cody i see you there cody i see you bro i wanted to be there with a tribe guys so badly uh, if you guys don't know who cody is he's the uh social manager for tribe and damn as livy just popped off there with a gadget and the super on tamari okay as Levi, I see you. I see you on the Mandy making a statement, especially considering he wasn't on the roster for the first two games. Like, that is a big statement, especially on Mandy. Mandy is a big pop off brawler. Right, so good taps from his Levy. He's going to go for a super, just barely misses that on the call, but he, he is really feeling himself right now, tapping like crazy. Zulan's probably going to get pinched out here, probably a step too aggressive. And now, unfortunately, Blue Star going the way of Totem. But, Zulan's still got some gadgets left. As Livy, I don't know, I feel like Angelo should probably go on the Mandy here because as Livy's just getting super after super. I think I'd rather, I don't know, but I guess they're trying to put the Carl on the Mandy-ish. Nah, I'll be keeping Jean on the Mandy, but Jean's not really going to get too much value into that. Um, Zulan's going to go for the... Oh, it does miss. Does get pulled instead. That's unfortunate. That is Zulan getting caught out twice there. But they just need to get... They can just literally kill anyone on Totem. Baru with a blue star. Chaos and Mari. So, I mean, they've got Mandy Super. Zulan still has... I mean, we won't have Mandy Super just yet. But eventually they'll get it. They'll have a gadget from Zulan pretty soon. So Mari's going to get taken down. Great kill from Zulan. There we go. It's like as Livy's going to get taken down by the Carvo Blue Star in the favor of Totem. Zulan's going to go down as well. Miss Super from as Livy. Tyrant going in here. I don't think there's enough cooking for Tribe to come back. And now Totem are going to be on... Oh, game point. Okay, this is... This is scary. I would not want to be in this situation if I was Tribe. Totem just need one game one game one bounty set could all that matters and you wouldn't be going to world finals that is just absolutely insane it's actually a packed out arena you look you love to see it don't you like there's just something about seeing brew stars do good it will always make me happy like we want the game to be as suc successful as possible especially for esports like brew stars is a good esports it just needs to be managed properly right it was like, uh, did I miss a kill there or did the spectate just not show up straight away? I'm not too sure. Anyways, as Olivia gets a super and our tribe have a three star lead. Great gadget this time from Zulan. He's just going to heal up here and wait for his shield. If he's using the fake injury star power, it works so well with this shield gadget as well. Oh, Gera, sorry. It's Olivia with another super. He's going to wait for the time and just get the connection on tomorrow. It's pretty hard to confirm kills though with. Mandy Super though into their composition. I guess that's probably why they use Carl as well. You don't want to use anyone squishy going into a Mandy. Another connection from his Livy. He's chaining these supers like crazy. But yeah, they're pretty hard to confirm them into kills. Tribe already on the back foot with one minute left. But again, if they just get like a good gadget from Zulan, good super as well. His Livy's tapping like crazy. Oh, nearly manages to get Maru there. 
He's he's cooking though. He's farmed so many supers right here. Tyrant did a good job against Chaos. I mean, it's just it's pretty hard as a Meg to really do anything into an Angelo because you do get heavily outranged. She's gonna get pinched so heavily. Zulan doing good to keep him back. Triber on the back foot here. Zulan does get a kill. Manages to stay alive as well. Really well played from Zulan. He's going to get the gadget. It's Livy with a kill onto Jean. That was going to be really close there because it was a good kill from um, Totem to get Zulan. But as Livy straight away strikes. 15 seconds left. I'm literally biting my nails. It's so intense. Hypercharge coming from Chaos. Gets the shot onto Zulan. Good super from as Livy. Zulan's going to go in to confirm the kill. There's only three stars left. Mario tries to go in. Gene pull as well. But as Livy finishing it on six stars. You absolutely love to see it, bro. Just absolutely popped off. That is such a big statement to make. Especially considering your team are 2-0 down. Off the bench to do that. Absolutely insane. All right. You can see the Tribe Boys are a lot more pumped this time around. <laughs> Zulan really putting his faith into Fade. You love to see it. Right. That's going to be set number three. Let's pop into set number four. Let's jump in into set number four. We've got Hot Potato Heist. So straight away, Totem go with the Frank pick, which again seems to be a common theme right now. Everyone just seems to pick Frank no matter what. I mean, Colette is banned. That's probably the only brawler that can really shut down Frank that well. Um, so Gale is open. Trying to think what else is open. Rico is open. Barley is open. Berry's open as well. Trying to think what else can count. I mean, Meg's open as well. We see a lot of people just picking Meg, Gale, straight into Frank. Every single time. You know, a good underrated pick into Frank could definitely be El Primo, for example. Because he can open up the map. He's just great in a one versus one. But he might be a bit too defensive. Harry, if it could go with a buzz as well. Buzz isn't the worst into Frank. And just good for overall pressure. But let's see what they go. I know as Livy really loves the Rico, so I won't be surprised if they do pick it. But the problem is I don't think Rico really has enough to deal with the Frank. So to go with the Barley instead, I think that's a that's a decent pick because the thing is you can just switch gadget. If I were total, I don't know what would really go into this. You could go with like a buzz to counter the barley. You could go with throw yourself. You could go with, I mean, Edgar's probably, I use Edgar's counter throws, but I just don't think it's like, you don't really do that into a Gale. You're just never going to beat that, especially with how broken Gale is in the meta. So yeah, I probably, I think they'll go for bury, yeah, bury themselves. Literally said that. Bury themselves, so two throwers. Can never really go wrong. I think Barley does win the throw interaction, but Berry offers more utility, and especially in combination with the Frank, I wouldn't be. I, I would go something aggressive here if I was Totem again. I'd go with a Primo. I don't know. I'd, I'd go Meg. Okay, they go with Meg mid. We do need something in the mid to be honest, and Berry pairs really well. So now. I, I, would, I would still go something aggressive. Like, surely Tribe needs something aggressive. You can't... There's no way that you can defend for a full 2 minute 30 against this combination. You need something on the front foot. They can go with the buzz. They can go with a ball. Okay, I've seen ball being used by a few teams. Especially, I think, Toxic Lotus in a tournament before this tournament. They went the ball into the Frank and it worked really well. Because a good ball should just be able to win. Because you can cancel. You can just get on top of Frank and just delete him. And then get another super. So yeah, that should work. I'm, hap I'm happy with Tribe's combination. They've got Gale in the mid versus Meg. Should be able to win that. Barley versus Barry 1v1 should be able to win. I mean, in terms of individual matchups. Tribe does have the composition. But do they have enough? It it's all just down to who can get the most pressure overall. We are going to go with Barry in the mid though. Which is pretty interesting. They go with Meg on defense. Yeah, I mean, that is pretty standard, right? Barry's going to super up. Looks like Mario's going to try and get on the safe, but he isn't low HP, so he's not going to get a ton of damage on the safe. He's probably just going to get some chip damage, but you wouldn't really want to stay on the safe in that situation. So you can see Fade. They're just trying to ignore the Frank as much as possible, which is kind of um, a good good thing to do to be honest because the more time you spend trying to kill frank it's going to be hard with the berry healing with the amount of hp he's got it's good from tyrant wasting a lot of time mario is able to get a lot of damage on the save though look at the damage stack up from 
The star power and the gadget combined. That's just crazy. Now Berry's going to get a shot in a set. This is literally looking one shot from Tribe. They need to win it on this push because if Berry gets forward one more time, it's literally over. A lot of damage raining down. Some good kill from Fade there and they're going to be able to finish that. Wow, that was, a, that was a beautiful game of heist. That was back and forth. One moment I thought that Totem about to finish it, then Tribe come back in the end. Really well played for them, to be fair. I think Tyrant got so much value out of his life in the end. I just, I love watching Tyrant play. Like, it's just, the thing is, like, Tyrant doesn't even grind, like, ladder or ranked too often. He just grinds scrims. He's just that guy. And he always has been. He's always been one of the best in NA. And it's all just down to how much value he gets with every life. He's such a hard kill most of the times. All right, full on Tyrant Glaze, okay? He's been the GOAT since day one. Right, Fade's getting a lot of value right here. He's actually using the health gadget as well. And he's using Berserk. I, I'm writing this down. If, if Fade is using these things, I'm writing this down. I just thought Stomper was better, period. But I guess, like, the heal gadget can help get you an extra shot. And that extra shot can win you the game, as we saw. So, Barry's going to go up here. Chaos is going to go in and get the gadget onto the safe. Which, again, is why Barry's so annoying on heists. Because you could just keep doing that over and over again. The problem is that you do waste a lot of utility yourself using that super. Because now you can't use it on your teammates. Faye's just going to go up and avoid the Frank again. Which, I love that play from him. He's going to get... Oh, no way. The Berserker and the Damage Gear on the safe. And that's going to be it. Beautiful draft. Beautiful draft from Tribe. Love to see it. Good execution as well. And I was surprised by the bull pick, but I think the bull pick worked amazingly, especially into the Frank. The strategies were great. As like they're looking so good, especially a lot of people saying like as Liver was the weak link. He's literally came into the squad and now they're back into it because of well not just because of him, because of the team, but you just love to see all these things. So going into set five, this couldn't get closer. All right, guys, jumping into set number five, the decider. We have got flaring Phoenix. Uh, knockout. <sighs> Why this map? You guys, if you watched any competitive, you know how annoying it can be. It just all comes down to the last interaction. It's just how it goes. Pearl first pick. I like that. I see a lot of... Like a lot of people were sleeping on Pearl for a while in the knockout meta. But she's very good here to stop the cheese. Cheesy combinations. She can just be good to catch people off guard. Has a good amount of HP for the final engagement. Barley is just absolutely insane in the final engagement. My thinking is that Tribe are just happy for them to go Barley because there's, you know, there's Berry still in a the draft. They can go Dynamite even late pick, etc. Alright, Meg as well. It's just a common theme. I think there's just... These brawlers are just too strong. Like, you just see Gale everywhere, Meg, Frank. It's just the same brawlers that are reappearing. We're not seeing too much Lily, I think. Maybe Lily's a bit overrated. Uh, but only really good as a late pick. But it's just, it's just too many high HP brawlers in the meta for Lily to really pop off the way that I think she can. Anyways, so if I was Tribe, you need to throw a view of, of course, yourself. They go with a Tick. Tick is better than Barley, but not in the late stage. If you go, I mean, Bolly's just so good late stage because you just get more consistent damage. You also got the gadget to pair with a Mega that has 8,000 HP. So, so far, I'm still liking Totem's composition a little bit better. Last pick, they could go with maybe a Bell, an Angelo. There's no Buster. Uh, I th actually, I think we need something with tankiness for the end engage. But Daryl? Hmm. Daryl? Is it... Have they actually picked Daryl? Daryl? I mean, Daryl used to be good in a knockout met. That... that. Daryl, like, surely you just pick, like... I don't even know into that. But you just pick anything into Daryl, surely. I'm interested to see what they go. They could go, like, just anything that can feed, like, even a Mandy, Alti, yeah. I can see, like, I'd have literally maybe even gone RT if I was tried. Because the thing is, right, like, Daryl's not going to get any kill with his role anymore. In the back, like, a year ago, he was so good in knockout because of the end stage. He's got that shield with his super. But how is Daryl going to get a He might get a kill against Barley, but he's not really going to kill Meg, especially with a knockback. He's not going to kill RT because of the super. I'd have just rather have gone RT because he's got that Jackie form. With the shield. Yeah, I, I, it can work. I mean, maybe this is something to practice in scrims. 
but I, I just don't really see it, especially how bad Daryl is in the meta. I, I, I personally don't see it. I, I'm, I'm open to it anyways. I just don't think... Okay, good pressure from Totem though. So the, the reason why Totem are pressures, uh, pressuring so much is because Daryl has to wait a full 30 seconds to get his super. So kind of think how... I tell you guys that you just got to go against the kit. Well, you got to do the same against Daryl. Again, he's useless without his super. So if they get early pressure, if they keep him in spawn like this, then you're just stuck. So I think the strategy here is just to do that as much as possible. Good super from Fade. He's going to go in, but I think it doesn't get traded out. Okay, that was a great, great kill there. I mean, if they just leave him in a 1v1, Daryl will get kills. Like maybe I'm eating my words here. Maybe this is something they've practiced. Uh, to be honest, I think Total should just be grouping up and they'll win every single time. But Mara's going to try it. Yeah, there's no point really trying it in 2v1. Right, love to see it. I mean, if I'm to be proved wrong, I, I want to be proved wrong because I love Daryl. Like, there's no hate to Daryl. I love him. He's one of my favorite brothers for sure. Like, top 10. I've always got a soft spot for him. But in this meta, I just don't really know. I mean, maybe this is a strategy for cooking up. So... In terms of the strat, again, Tribe are gonna they're happy to play late game. Most teams are happy to play late game as well. The problem is the later Tribe leave it, I don't think they're gonna stand more of a chance because just literally because of Bali, the Bali gadget, the Bali super, it's just a bit more than the tick. Tick is getting a lot of pressure though. Hmm. I mean, what can you even commentate about this? Like, <laughs> it must be so nerve-wracking playing as a player, just knowing that everything's going to happen in the last few seconds, and it's just the finest of margins dictate whether you're going to the World Finals. I, I just hate to play this map in a match point, match point situation. So, Gas going to start closing in here. Looks like Tom have the more pressure. Tyrant's got a hypercharge. Okay, this is looking good for Tribe. A lot of healing, though, on the side of Totem. Ticket's going to go down onto Chaos. And Tribe are moving on to set point. Okay, maybe I'm eating my words. Corey looks hyped up there. Beautiful lobster, man. Hype them up. Hype them up. Tribe one set away. I'm eating my words right here. I, uh, maybe this is just a shock factor because I'm shocked. Sometimes That does work quite often in pro play. I'm eating my words here, by the way. <laughs> it does happen quite often in pro play when you got something inconvenient that you've been kind of hiding behind strategies. And then teams don't know how to face off against it or what to do. Even if the brawler is not that good in a meta, like if you're good with him, like Fade is, then what do we really do? So the thing is now is that Totem expects it. They know kind of uh, the synergy that Tribe are looking for. Again, Maru's not going to press on his own here. Like even though they're, they're probably thinking, right, oh, it's just a Daryl we can press into him. No, you can't press into him in a 1v1 because he still has 10k HP. still got that knockback. And can still really do a lot. So this time around, we're going to get Thrower versus Thrower. I think Chaos just knows that he's not going to win the 1v1. He's just going to sit there trying to get a bit of a super. I mean, it's like he's doing a great job of not allowing him to push forward. He's going to get Chaos pretty weak here. Chaos already having to use a gadget just because of how weak Eslev has got him. Aggressive tick super going out here. But I think Totem have the overall control here. Yeah, Tyrant's just been getting tapped up too much. Fade goes with a gadget. Going to try and get the kill onto... Um, Chaos, a hypercharge already from Ezlivy. What? How did he get a hypercharge so early? I didn't even expect that. A bit wasted in the end, but definitely could have been the difference maker. Especially that hypercharge, and then afterwards, you've got those tick mines that do like 4k damage. That could be brutal in the last stages. But it's just a problem with tick. Like, it takes four tick supers to get your hypercharge. You don't really see it come like into play too often. So, Tribe this time trying to get a bit more aggression. It is always key in Knockout. If you can get the aggression, then, of course, the, ga the gas is literally going to work in your favor. Like, something that is out of Totem's control is just going to force them to take more damage. So, a lot of aggression from his Olivia here on the tick. Keeping Moro back. He's playing this beautifully on the tick. I mean, tick, a lot of time, doesn't take skill, but... It, it does in some forms because you've got to make sure that you're keeping the opponents back. Chaos is going to get pretty weak. Has to use a super. Fade is just getting absolutely obliterated by the Meg. And now that's going to be a three versus one. <laughs> oh, the Daryl. Daryl. I just. It pain. Like, it worked the first set, but the Daryl is just. He's just a sitting duck most of the game. I don't, I don't know. I. I'm, I'm looking for... I'm hoping Corey or someone does, like, a breakthrough. Because I just want to hear why they went Daryl. 
to begin with. But anyway, we're on set point. Set, not even set point, match point for both teams here. This could not get any closer. And even I'm biting my nails here. And this is a day after LCQ. Imagine watching this live. It would have been absolutely insane. Both teams literally fighting for their lives. It's going to get close. This is what you want to see. You want to see close games. Two good teams fighting off. Again, I wish both teams would go into the World Finals. It's unfortunate that one of these teams don't because they're both legendary. Fade's going to roll in here. Get the Meg really weak. As Livy's going to go down. Fade's going to go down. Two versus one scenario against Barley. It's just not going to happen. Now, Totem are moving on to match point here. If we just need to win one of the next two rounds, it's just not looking good. I just feel like the Daryl is just getting found out too many times. He just doesn't have the presence of other brothers. Okay, lane switch here. I recognize Tick's getting a lot of value over here. So I've just put Barley versus the Tick. I think that's wise. I don't think RC or Meg can really do anything against the Tick. And Tick will win the ball that the thrower uh, match up but won't do anything else. So I'm wondering what is Livy is using in terms of gears because he's not using a shield gear on the Tick, which is very interesting. I'm not too sure why he's not using a shield gear. He's definitely going to use the Mythic gear. He's using vision. I don't think you really need vision on this. I don't know what he's using. But would he be using damage, maybe? I don't know. Right. <laughs> I know, maybe he's going health. I know. I think he's using vision. He just hits one and it just popped up. All right. Fade's going to roll in here. Does get taken down. Chaos is going to get pretty weak as well. It's looking really rough for Tribe. Tyrant's going to go down. Three versus one situation. Ah, I just knew it was over. All right, that, I mean, big props to Totem for winning that one. Of course, I'm very happy for him because I'm good friend. Well, not I'm better friends with Tribe, but I'm happy for him because they deserved it. They've got such a stacked roster. These guys are absolutely goaded and some of the nicest guys in the community. I'm happy for them. This time around, there, there was no real beef with Totem and Tribe. You know, there wasn't much going on. Chaos going to run to his girlfriend, I believe. You love to see it, and also some players as well. That is, um, yeah, pretty hectic. Okay, you love love. All right, it's, it's not PG, Brawl Stars. Can we switch off? <laughs> we, didn't, <laughs> we didn't get to see uh, the handshakes and everything else. But yeah, that's going to be it for today's video, guys. I'm a, it's a little bit unfortunate being a Tribe fan and whatever else, but... Yeah, it's just how it the cookie crumbles sometimes. There's too many good teams and you can't really expect to go to World Finals when you've literally got as stacked as a team as Totem. So yeah, that's going to be it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.